last Sunday, we commemorated the arrival of the, in Hobart town, of the first priest, Father Philip Connolly, 200 years ago. And really with his arrival, the ministry of the church, Catholic Church here in Tasmania, began. On the Friday after Easter, uh, we ordained Jesse Banez to the priesthood here in St Mary's Cathedral. Jesse was the eighth ordination that I have been able to celebrate since my arrival here in uh, 2013. We currently have two seminarians studying for the priesthood, Vinko Muriadin, who's here on the altar today and has been working here in the cathedral parish, and Kanishka Pereira, who's in his fifth year at Corpus Christi College in Melbourne. We also have four men in Tasmania who belong to various religious communities who are also preparing for the priesthood. And the other week, a young man from this cathedral parish, in fact, approached me wishing to become a priest. It surely is a very encouraging sign to the future of the church here in Tasmania. There are men stepping forward to offer themselves as service to as to service as priests. The vocation to the priesthood is in many ways a mysterious thing. There is a human attraction in the desire to become a priest, but really a priestly vocation can't be understood simply on the human level alone. A vocation, as the name suggests, is a calling. And that calling is a calling from God and ultimately it is an action of grace in a person. In usual circumstances, the person, the, this grace comes to a person who is living a life of faith. Because a person of faith opens their lives to God. They have a spiritual dimension to their lives that enables them to detect and to respond to the movements of God. Indeed, I think it's true, the deeper the faith, the more one's heart is also aligned to the will of God. So it's not unusual, though, for a vocation to be somewhat of a surprise to a person. It's not necessarily anticipated. And yet, a sense of a vocation resonates in the spirit and it endures over time. God never imposes himself on a person, but God invites. And this invitation that a person receives both attracts and strangely appeals. And thus a vocation sits well with a person. They simply feel that it's right. And they respond with joy and expectation. What does it mean to be a priest? Each priest, who I'm sure would summarise their life in various ways, Certainly a priest knows his, his identity has changed because this is not a job. It involves indeed a change in being. A man knows that he is a priest. It's his deepest identity. Really just like a couple know that they're changed when they get married. They are now a husband and a wife. And so do it is with a priest. He knows He's a priest. While we might immediately identify the role of a priest as we think about his ministry as one of saying Mass, and certainly that is central, I think it's important to be reminded, really, that the first role of the priest is to preach. Because this was the call given to the apostles. They were to go out to all the world and preach the gospel. Because pre preaching aims to foster faith. Without faith, there could be no sacramental life. We wouldn't be here at Mass today unless we had faith. And at Mass, we actually are nourished in our faith by the readings of God's Word and the preaching 
prior to the celebration of the Eucharist. This is the right order. Faith leads to the sacraments. St. Paul says they will not believe unless they have heard of him and they will not have heard of him unless they have a preacher. Thus, the first role of a priest is to preach, not only at Mass, but whenever opportunity presents itself, because preaching elicits faith. And this is always, and must be always, the central and essential mission, first mission, of a priest. Then among those who do have faith, the priest is an instrument of grace, grace provided through the sacraments. At each sacramental moment, the priest is the instrument of the saving action of God in the, lo- in the soul of the believer. Of course, it's reached its high point when the priest alone can effect the transformation of bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ, which he then administers to the people. The priest, of course, is also called to be a pastor of a Christian community. Like he is the spiritual father. We use the word father to designate a priest. He's a spiritual father among a Christian community. And his leadership, though, is exercised essentially as an exercise of service, modelling himself on Christ, who said he has come not to be served, but to serve. In this role of pastoral leadership, the priest models himself on Christ, the Good Shepherd. In today's Gospel, from chapter 10 of St John, speaks about the character of the Good Shepherd as one who's willing to lay down his life for his sheep. This again expresses a very important dimension to priestly ministry. A priest freely accepts celibacy so that his life is lived solely for the service of the people. He has no wife, no family. So he can offer himself completely for the good of the parish community and the work of the church. In other words, the priest makes a gift of himself. Christ himself said in the Gospel today, I lay it down, lay down my life of my own free will. So a priest chooses to lay down his life for the people he's called to serve. He does this freely. He wants to do it. When Pope St John Paul II reflected upon his 50 years of priestly ministry, he described his vocation as gift and mystery. He saw his calling as a gift, a gift from God. And he understands his calling too as a mystery, the mystery of God's working in and through his priestly ministry. This is true of every priest. We know our vocation is a gift from God. We know that it's our working is also in the realm of mystery. No priest, of course, is perfect. And yet our humanity is, in a way, a bridge through which God is able to work. A priest knows, in the end, that he is simply an instrument of God's saving work being accomplished. So today is fourth, this fourth Sunday of Easter is often known as Good Shepherd Sunday because every year we read from chapter 10 of St. John where Jesus describes himself as a good shepherd. Having just commemorated 200 years of the arrival of the first priest, it is a suitable opportunity for us to reflect upon the role of priest in the life of a parish and indeed in the life of each one of us. And no doubt we can all see how the the preaching, the ministry, the witness of different priests have enabled us to live and grow as faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. So today we could take the opportunity on this Good Shepherd Sunday to thank God for the gift and mystery of the priesthood in the church and in each of our lives.